sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. And then, since today's World Communion Sunday, we're going to sing, This is My Father's World. This is my father's world, and to my listening ears, you can be seated. All nature sings, and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my father's world, I rest me in the dark. Of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, his hand the wonders wrong. This is my father's world, the birds that carols raise, the morning light, the lily white, his clear their maker's praise. This is my Father's world, He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass I hear Him pass, He speaks to me everywhere. This is my Father's world, oh let me never forget. That though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world, the battle is not done. Jesus who died shall be satisfied, and earth and heaven be one. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain in his hands. He's got the wind and the rain. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the tiny little baby. In his hands, he's got the tiny little baby. In his hands, he's got the tiny little baby. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands.
got rid of all the et ceteras. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this song Lindsay brought to us a while back, and I'm going to let her lead it this morning. This is one called Light the Fire. Play Eugene. I need to adjust a little bit. So light the fire in my soul, fan the flame, make me whole. Lord, you know where I've been, so light the fire in my heart again. I said to praise you, but I the fire in my soul, fan the flame, make me whole, Lord, you know where I've been, so light the fire in my heart again. I feel your arms around me as the power of your healing Fire in my soul, fan the flame, make me whole. Lord, you know where I've been, so light the fire in my heart again. And then we are one in the Spirit. I'm using all my contraptions today. <laughs> we are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity will one day be restored. And they know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to October 1st. Yeah, I know. Wow. What a beautiful, what a, the last quarter of the year is a beautiful fall day. It feels crisp. Of course, it's going to be 80 degrees next Sunday, so don't worry. No. Welcome to North Carolina. Thank you for everything last week. I discovered while I was back in Princeton, uh, some things never change. New Jersey is the land of the quick and the dead. If you're not quick, you're dead. And it's very true. You, that's, but uh, it was a wonderful conference. It was good to be back and it's good to see. The seminary doesn't change and yet it changes. It's a neat, uh, a neat feeling. Our scripture this morning uh, comes from Ezekiel, Ezekiel 18, verses 1 through 4, then verses 25 through 32, and then we'll read Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. The word of the Lord came to me. What, what do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of a parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say the way of the Lord is unfair? Here, now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? 
When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. And for the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they have committed. They shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says the the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel. All of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. And from Philippians 2, 1 through 13. If there be any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind. Having the same love. Being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. So at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. And may we know in our hearts and our lives the truth of that word as we live it in our daily lives. May we pray. Our Father, we're thankful that we can come to you this day. We're thankful for the very breath of life that you have given us this day. We're thankful that as we have gathered together in this place, in this time, that we have gathered to celebrate your supper. We are celebrating communion. And not only do we celebrate it together, we celebrate it with Christians all over the world on this day. And we are reminded afresh and anew that we are one in your spirit, one in your love. And that you want us to have the mind of Christ. Oh, let that mind be among us. Let that love be manifest in us. Let that reality be lived out in our lives. And let the world know that we are Christians. By the way we do and act by our love. Our hearts continue to go out to those who are suffering through earthquakes and hurricanes. We pray that you will be there, and we know that you are, that you will be with those who are responding to those needs. We continue to remember so many places this day that are torn by violence and terror and war itself. And we're reminded again that we are to be peacemakers, that your spirit of peace should be among us. 
and that we should do the very things that we need to do to make it happen. So speak to us in these moments. We confess our sins, for we have sinned. We have fallen far short of what it is that you would have us to be. But we come to your table of grace. We come to your place of acceptance. We come to your throne of grace. And we are thankful. We're thankful for the grace that you give us. It is amazing. We pray in the name that is most dear to us, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, we are grateful and thankful that we can come, that we can come bearing gifts, offerings, that we are able to give. And we give because you have given us everything. You have given us life. You have given us love. You have given us resources. And now we give in return. We give that others may know. We give that we would share. We give that we would educate. We give that we will be your church. Bless the gift and the giver. We are thankful. In your loving name we pray. Amen. Steve got back from Princeton. He sent me an email and said, can we do this hymn? And he learned a, a song. It's a beautiful, he knows lots of songs. It's a beautiful, <laughs> a beautiful hymn called Spirit Open My Heart. And it has, uh, Steve often mentions that he likes those haunting mountain tunes that come from that Scott Irish tr tradition and the tune of this song is actually mountain time and the reason they sound that way is because it's based on a certain scale called a pentatonic scale it has only five notes if you went over to the piano and just played all the black keys that'd be a, a pentatonic scale but it has that that honing sound so Robin's going to help me we're going to this will be one we'll sing together soon I hope <laughs> 
Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living as you love me. Spirit, open my heart. God, replace my stormy heart with a heart that's kind and tender. All my coldness and fear to your grace I now surrender. Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living as you love me, I love in receiving and in giving. Spirit, open my heart. Right As my law, my goal, my story, in each thought, word, and deed, may my living bring you glory, Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living as you Share the joy of sister, brother, in the welcome of Christ. May we welcome one another, Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living as you Thank you. How beautiful. Isn't that beautiful? To the joy and pain of living, receiving and giving. I like the contrast. And I'm glad to know why I like the, <laughs> the five notes, right? Okay. Yeah, I get <laughs> yeah. You come to church, you learn something. This is great. Thank you so much. And that's what this table is all about today. Receiving and giving. For as we receive nurture from this table, we live our lives in, in such a way. We're reminded of, of, of what Paul writes to that church in Philippians, of the very things that we are to about as a people of God. We are to have the mind of Christ. What mind are you in this morning? Or what's in your mind this morning? You don't have to answer that. <laughs> but think, what are the very things that are troubling you? What are the things that are giving you joy today? What are the things that you're thinking about? Uh, uh, if, I had, uh, if I had a football team this year, I would be thinking about that. But uh, obviously Carolina's not playing football this year. It does not appear to be the case. Now, what are the other things? That are, what is some of the pain and the, and the joy 
of your life? What are these realities of life that, that truly matter? What are your fears, your worries, your doubts? What are the things that are bothering you? What are the very things that uh, bring you here to this place this day? We are the church. We are a people of broken hearts, broken lives, that seek wholeness and goodness in the very love of God, in the very fellowship of the people that are united in one accord, as he said. You didn't know there was a Honda in the Bible. It was also a, a motorcycle, too. You know the motorcycle? Yeah, and David's triumph was heard through all the land. You didn't even know there was a motorcycle named Triumph anymore, did you? I think there's also a car named Triumph years ago. That's all right. Uh, uh, why I'm on these kind of terrible jokes. Uh, Isaiah had a horse. Yeah. Very famous horse. Ismi. He said, whoa, Ismi. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> We come with joy, we come with sorrow, we come with humor, we, we come together. And this day, because it is World Communion Day, we used to call it Worldwide Communion, and then we discovered when you say world, that takes care of worldwide. The world is world. It's World Communion Day. We, we share with Christians throughout the land on a day that we gather around the table where the Lord is the host. Where there is a place for everyone. Where he invites everyone to come to his table, to be a part of his body, to, to be a part of his fellowship, to be a part of his communion. He comes because he has offered himself, he's offered his life, he's offered his love, he has shown us the way. And that spirit has opened to him and to us a life of joy and pain. Because that's life. We sell the world a bill of goods when we think it's all joy, 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 joy. And it may be down in our hearts, but there is pain in our lives. And the God of the joy is also there each step of every day in every way. And that's what this table is about. And this table is an invitation it is an invitation to all to come. It is an invitation that we, we can come to this table. One of the most magnificent things about the scripture, about what Jesus shares, especially in the parables, is that the Father is always waiting. The Father's arms and hearts are open. And he's saving a place. He's saving a place at the table for the one who is not there. For the one who is missing. He's saving that place. In the hope, just like the prodigal, that one day they will come to their senses and they would come home. Come home to, to the, the joy and the responsibility of the Father. To come home to the purpose and the task. And, and there is a place. Robert Frost and the death of the salesman and the, uh, the death of the hired hand. There is anguish, there is sorrow, there is remorse. And the character says, home is the place where when you have to go, they have to take you in. God is telling us that he's left the door open for us. He's left a place for us. He has set a place setting for us. We just need to come. We need to come to his table. We need to be nourished at his table. We need to be brought up at his table. We need to do something at his table that recognizes that grace we need to be thankful. So th this is a table that is open. 
You know, there are so many times in our society and in our life that we want to close people off. We want to, to, to close the door. We want to slam the door. Uh, what, what do we do when we get mad at somebody? We, we, don't, we, we want to uh, deprive them of the pleasure of our voice. We just be st- we're st- we say, I'm not talking to you. Kim Burns is doing the documentary on Vietnam. It's a very painful documentary for a lot of us who lived through that and understand that. But I remember as a high school student in my first year at Carolina, all the problems in trying to decide what shape of a table would be used around which they would negotiate. Would it be rectangular? Would it be a square? Would it be a circle? And they, could, they took forever to decide what kind of table they would meet for which they would meet to discuss peace. How sad. You see, we have a rectangular table, but it doesn't need a shape at all. On this table, there is the feast that God has prepared for all. That he has given of himself and of his life. And he really just wants us to have one thing as Christians. To have the mind of Christ. What does it mean to have the mind of Christ? What does it mean to be like Jesus? What does it mean to to follow Jesus in our world? Does it mean having a bumper sticker that says, honk if you love Jesus? You honk at one of those people that have that sticker on them. Man, you see what kind of reaction you usually get. Or does it mean having a lapel button that says, got Jesus? No, I think it means a whole lot more than that. To have the mind of Christ and to be like Jesus is to be filled with his spirit, to be filled with his love, to be filled with his purpose, to be filled with the very things that he would have you to do. And as Paul would say in other other places, sometimes it means that you don't insist upon your own way. That you care about other people. That you are hospitable. We talk a lot about hospitality, but I don't know that we're very hospitable anymore in our world. Mainly because... When we associate with people, we, we keep looking at our phones. <laughs> what do we do without a phone? I say, I don't know what I did before. I don't wonder if I have a camera and a phone. Whoever would have thought? I thought when the first phone I have a camera, what in the world would you do with a camera? The camera takes a picture of our world. Maybe it's also taking a picture of us of what we're doing and how we're doing it. How is the mind of Christ relevant to you? We worry that the church has no relevance anymore. That's not the problem. The problem is, does Christ have relevance in your life? That's where the church is. That's where we must be as his people. That's where we must learn to love and to be and to do, to respect, to share, to give, to sacrifice, because there is something more than ourselves. 
we have forgotten that this table is a table of sacrifice and it beckons us to also sacrifice and to give. We don't come to the table to say, what can I get? We come to the table to say thank you. And now what can I do? How can I be? For this is the body that was broken. This was the body that was given. And Jesus said, just as my body was broken, ours should also be too. We are compelled to give of ourselves, of our lives. For this is how God has called us into community. This is what we are about. This is why we do the very things that we do. And we drink the cup. We become so sanitized that we forget it's a common cup. We forget that we drink of the cup that Christ drank. We drink of of this cup of life. And remember that as we drink of this cup together, we are one in his love. We are one in his spirit. We are one in the very things that we do, for we are family. And all over the world this day, we are reminded, no matter what shade or tint or accent or, or color of our skin, we are the same in Christ. We are his children, his people. One of the most meaningful World Communion Sundays I've ever experienced was that very first trip to the Ukraine. Understood very little of it, even with the translator. It's, it's bad when you don't understand the translator. If you've been to the, you have been to Ukraine, you know what I'm saying. But I didn't have to understand. Because I knew, I knew when they broke that bread, what was being broken. I knew when we tasted that bread, we tasted life itself. I knew when we we shared that bread that we were companions. That's exactly what companion means, those who break bread together. With bread, campagna. We were companions in this journey of life. And I knew that God was greater in his love than any of us. And on that day and on this day, we were one. And that needs to be our prayer. That we will be one in that generous, gracious spirit of life. That we will be one in that purpose that God has for each of us. And that God's love will be relevant in our lives. Because we act out of that love. And that is our purpose as the church of Jesus Christ. So we come to the table. We come in joy. We come in pain. We come in life to celebrate the Lord's death till he comes. We are the church. May we pray. Our Father, we are grateful and thankful for the opportunity of coming to your table to breaking bread together. 
We're thankful that there is a place for us at this table, a place that you have furnished, a place that you have set, a place that you have given. For you have given us that invitation. You have invited us to come home. You invite us to be in your home as you are in our hearts and in our lives. Speak to us. And that name, that is the name of Jesus, the name of which every knee shall bow, the name of our Lord. We do pray. Our deacons will come forward. And indeed, on that night, Jesus celebrated Passover. A feast, a celebration of deliverance. He imbued in those elements new meaning because of the way he lived his life. So he took the bread, a bread that would have been a flat bread made in haste without rising, leavening, sprinkled with bitter herbs so that people might remember their sorrows, would remember the days of slavery. And he broke that bread and he said, this is my body that is broken for you. God knows our brokenness. God knows our lives. And in the deepest sense of communion, we share that today. Laurie Anderson, the chair of our diaconate, will share with us now the blessing of the bread. Heavenly Father, we come down thanking you for these moments of reverence and reflection of all that Christ has done in our lives and for the fact that we are worldwide in this celebration. As we take the bread from this community of communion table, we ask your blessings on it. We, we pray and as we eat it that we will do, eat it in remembrance of Christ's body shed for us. And as we go forward in our lives of faith we and thankfulness, we ask that our lives be honored and be pleasing to you. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. From the beginning of the church, there's always been one message, go and serve, go and serve.
This is the bread of life. This is the bread of love. This is the bread that nourishes us because we're one. Eat all of it. On the same night, he took the cup. He said, this is my blood that is shed for you. We share that cup. It is the cup of joy and sorrow, of life and death. It is the cup. It is the cup of sacrifice. And so we share the cup, we share it together, for we are one in his love, in his spirit, in his purpose, for we are at his table, and we remember his love and his sacrifice. Drink. And so we remember this day that we are one in the bond of love, the love that God has given us in Jesus Christ, his son. And we will stand and we will sing the bond of love, and that will be our hymn of invitation. And we invite all of you to be a part of our congregation and our people as we stand. One. 
in the bond of love. We are one in the bond of love. We have joined our spirit with the spirit of God. We are one in the bond of love. Let us sing now. Be seated for a few moments. The Reverend Tim Pace is our deacon of the week. He will read the Old Testament scripture and will be having the morning prayer at the second service. The youth and their parents will meet briefly after this service to fill you in on what's planned for the upcoming year. Our deacons will have their regular uh, deacons meeting today at 2 Finance and stewardship are continuing the process of our new budget. They'll receive budget requests tomorrow night at 7. The mobile mammography, mammography bus will be here on Wednesday from 8.30 to 3.30. You can make an appointment. We got the number uh, 704-403-1729. You remember that? Okay. Oh, yeah, you would. Yeah, you work with them. Yeah. All right. See Jennifer. <laughs> uh, this Thursday, the men are meeting at Punchy's for breakfast at 8, so come on out. Uh, if you come, I guarantee you'll have a PhD when you're through because it's piled high and deep there. Well, you, you learn more than you ever wish to know, but it's fun. So, yeah, it's true. All right, the children are making cards this month for the shoeboxes and the, the packing is November 5th. That's going to be next month. That's not, that seemed like a long time ago. Uh, it's not. Next Sunday is Meet Your Deacon Sunday. Uh, uh, please check today to make sure whatever we got for you is right in the current directory so it'll be right in the next directory. That makes sense? Okay. Because if it's not, you're going to be wrong for another year. <laughs> So call Patsy tomorrow. So we're going to do that. Robert, Cropwalk. October 15th. October 15th. We're, we're, we're walking. So we're walking. See you, Robert. You can sponsor me. All right. Remember that. Ball Festival is October 27th. You see the orange bins are out. Fill them up with candy. There's nothing like giving all the little urchins sugar to get them riled up. <laughs> I love it. Works for my grandchildren. <laughs> so anyway, we have fun. Uh, that, also, my, that's a great time, so I invite everybody to. Uh, mark your calendars, uh, November the 19th, and the, the new directory will say this. Uh, uh, it's celebrating 15 years at this location. Hard to believe we've been here 15 years. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll, uh, mark your calendars, November the 19th, we'll celebrate that. All right. Uh, one of the things that we need to do, we always receive the nominating committee report. Uh, you'll receive the full report in your directory, uh, but we receive it here. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> um, Ronald is going to project our stuff that is going to be in the directory. First, I'd like to thank our committee people, Mandy Ashley, Lauren Simpson, Winfrey Wicker, Alan Scott, and Jonathan Zambecki for all of their hard work on getting this done. The very first screen is going to talk about the church officers. All right, come on, Ronald. <laughs> and then it goes into the church council, the members that are on the church council. Then it has our diaconate with the committees that each of the diaconates are on. 
And then it breaks down each committee that we have. You will notice in parentheses that the 2020, those are the ones that are the new people that are coming on for this next rotation. Each one of those people have been contacted and have graciously agreed to serve on these committees. We thank them very much for their commitment here at McGill. So it is with honor and pleasure that we submit each of these names for recommendation for approval. All right, we'll let him finish the Keep scrolling. list. And all of you with photographic memories have got That's all right. that etched. <laughs> uh-huh, you know it all, don't you, Robin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> that does not need a second, do we? <laughs> We accept this report. All in favor? Any, any questions first? We appreciate the hard work. Uh, and if you have a question, we would be happy for you to serve in any way next year. <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All right. Your directories will be available next, uh, next Sunday in between services. Uh, the deacon, you'll get to meet your deacon, get your directory, and that. Jamie, uh, not Jamie, Eric, sorry. But I bet you got a message from Jamie. You got the message. All right. All right, good morning. Uh, this Thursday night, as many of you know, I'm Scoutmaster for the Scout Troop here at McGill. Uh, this Thursday night, we're going to be having an open house. So if anyone's interested in seeing what we do, who we are, some of the things we do on a regular basis in our weekly meetings, uh, Feel free to stop by Thursday. We meet from 7 to 8.30 here. Uh, like I say, I invite you to, to come out. If you know any young men, ages 11 through 17, preferably more on the 11, 11 side of that spectrum, uh, that are interested in outdoor stuff, uh, interested in camping, all kinds of stuff, any scout-related stuff, please uh, spread the word. Bring them out as well. Uh, we'd love to have them. Thank you. From Jamie, we do still need help for Saturday. The game is at 6. We will take the bus as usual. I assume it will leave at 4.30. 3.30. Um, <laughs> wow. Um, so you can see me or Jordan or Jamie. Um, and if you need a parking pass, if you'd rather drive instead, then let me know. And I'll let Jamie know so she can email it to you. Please, please, please come help. <laughs> that, you did that very well. All right. Remember that. That is the fourth, third, fourth game. I don't know. There's six of them. Yeah. Third one. Third one. Okay. Any other announcements? Sanctuary Choir Wednesday. Sanctuary Choir Wednesday. Good. Any others? We're good? We're good. All right, let's stand for the benediction. And now we go and we serve. We serve in the world that God so loved that he sent his son. We serve in a world that God so loved that he sends you and he sends me. He sends his church. We go because we have been at his table. We have been nurtured at his table. We go because we need to be like the one that we serve. We need to have the mind of Christ and take him into our world. Go and be the church. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we do pray. Amen. You've been watching and listening to the morning worship service at McGill Baptist Church in Concord, North Carolina. Our pastor, Dr. Steve Ayers, delivered the sermon this morning. McGill Baptist Church is located at 5300 Popper Tent Road. That's the corner of George Lyles Parkway. It's exit 54 off of I-85. You can get more information by calling the church office at 704-788-1180 or go to our website, mcgillbaptist.org. Thanks for joining us. We hope you got a blessing from today's service.